Great news for all of the VS Code plus Postgres users. The Postgres SQL extension for VS Code is now available. And this video is going to get you started with it. We're going to cover how we can create a server locally, how we can connect to a server that's deployed in the cloud, how we can run queries, how we can visualize schemas, how we can use the chat with database functionality, how we can provide tasks and queries in natural language and get agent mode to execute them for us and a bunch more. Be sure to check out the description. We're going to have the repository and a bunch more resources in there. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's dive right in. Alrighty, so I'll make sure to link the repository that we'll be walking through in the description, so check that out, and I'll have a bunch of other resources there too. So, prereqs. You are going to need Postgres installed, also, of course, the Postgres SQL extension for VS Code, Docker, and if you would like to use the chat with my database, or the agent mode functionality, you're gonna need GitHub Copilot installed as well. So go ahead and get that set up. So first thing is first, let's check out the extension. Once you have it installed, you can click on the icon. And first, let's just work with a local server. We can start by creating one. So I can select this little icon here and create a new server. Make sure you have Docker running and we're gonna go ahead and create a local Docker Postgres server. Scroll down, hit get started. It's gonna check some prereqs. Awesome. And now I can hit continue. For this, I'm gonna call this local, local post. And you can just copy the values that we have here as well. And the only thing I'm gonna copy here is this port value here. Alrighty. Password, I'm gonna just keep this as post address. I'm gonna try to type that in, yeah, correctly. Okay. And in advanced, just gonna paste in that port. Great, and then hit create. This might take a few moments as it has to pull the image and run some configurations in the background. But great, now that we have this, I'm gonna minimize this here. And let's explore what we've got here. So we have our connection here. And when we add more connections later, we'll have different ones that we'll be able to expand and minimize here. And then what we can do here is just expand the database one. And we have that default Postgres database here for us. We right click, we can do new query, chat with this database, connect database. But what we actually wanna do is create a new database. So we're gonna right click new query and then we can just copy in this uh, query that we have here. Awesome. Uh, you should see on the top right, the option to execute this query, and then we'll get the Postgres SQL query results at the bottom. Great, if we right click and hit refresh, we should see that actually, right click refresh here on the databases, we should see that new database here for us. Great, now we do have some data to load in. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and copy that command in step three. And this is gonna go ahead and restore the schema. And I'm gonna hit a new terminal, I'm gonna open this one up and then just paste in that command. Great. It's gonna go ahead and restore that scheme for me. And then now we're gonna go ahead and load in the data with that second one. Awesome. Great. And now what we can do is right click on the adventure work, which is that database we just created and select the connect with P SQL. And then this is most likely a command line that you are familiar with. So you can go ahead and execute things like, I'm just gonna copy this one here. In case we want to list the tables in the sales schema, gonna go ahead and run that. And we see that for us in the command line. We can also right click and then select visualize schema. And this my, let's get a little bit more space here. And here we can zoom in more, zoom out as you would like. Take some time to explore this. We're gonna see all the tables and columns and then all the relations that they have there as well. Great, and what I'm gonna do now is write a new query. We're gonna do this one here and then I'm just gonna copy in the beginning of this. Step eight, and then we should get some autocomplete, awesome. 
And then from here, it should offer to yes. And then we can select which one we want to do. And for me, it's going to be individual customer. Awesome. Go ahead and run that. And we see our results are loaded in here in the bottom. From here, we have the option to export. Well, we can open in a new tab. We can export to CSV, JSON, and Excel. So I'm going to hit save as CSV. It's going to ask me where I want to save it. That's fine there. And then it's opened up for us as well here. So what we can also do is take a look at these other functionalities that the extension offer us. And let's go back to our readme and we're going to execute a new query because we want to create a new database. So I'm going to go ahead and select new query, type in that query that we want to execute and go ahead and execute it. We'll hit refresh and we should see that new database here as well. Now we want to restore the schema that we have uh, provided to you in the repository. I'm going to go ahead and click a plus here and then paste in that first command. And then very similar to what we did before, except we're loading in a different schema and different data because this is a different database, right? Awesome. So what I'm going to do now is just copy over this first question that we want to ask when we chat with the database. Ah, one thing that you might need to double check is go to your settings and then type in PG SQL. And you want to make sure this enable the P the at PG SQL GitHub Copilot chat agent is checked off. All right. So make sure that's there. Great. So I'm going to right click on the database and select chat with this database. Awesome. And we see here PG SQL is connected to the local dash Postgres and then the database that we just selected. Right. So now I can go ahead and paste in that uh, query that I have that prompt that I have. I'm going to move some things here to just get some space here. And the cool thing here is that as it works through sort of answering that, we're going to see things get loaded into our query history here. So for example, here it says, I'll help you find the film with the highest revenue for each category during the first half of 2022. Now I can see the database structure. It is also saying here, uh, let me construct a query to find the highest revenue film for each category during that period. And it's now giving us an answer to that question that we asked originally, right? And it has some key insights. And on the left side here in query history, we can actually see the query that it's executed. So I can right click, open query, and this is just a standard query. From here, you can make some edits. You can execute again if you'd like. But this is a simple example as how you could leverage the chat with database functionality. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at how we can connect with a database that is in the cloud. So from here, I'm gonna actually just move some things around just to get a little bit more space. Gonna go ahead and close this. Don't save this. Don't save this. Don't save this. Okay. Now what we're going to do is not connect or create a server like we did before. We're going to add a new connection because ideally this is a, not ideally, you have to have the server deployed already. You can use the Azure CLI, you can use Bicep, you can use Terraform. And we actually have a template available in this repository. So if you have the Azure developer CLI installed locally, you can go ahead and run AZD up as long as you are logged in and you have an Azure account set up, this command will go ahead and deploy the resources necessary for you. Now, what you have to do once you have that resource created is use parameters, connection string, or you can browse Azure, you can select the subscription. And I'm gonna go ahead and set that up. I'm not gonna do it on screen because it's gonna have like my subscription ID and things like that. Uh, but once you've got that done, you can hit save and connect. Okay, so back in our extension, we can take a look at our connections. And now I have the Azure Postgres one on the top. And what we can do is expand that database folder and then right click on the Postgres one and then select a chat with this database. And then we have some questions that you can sort of use to explore this functionality. So I'm just going to select the first one here. 
and then paste it in. And all we want to learn is what storage and compute resources does my database have? But feel free to explore the other ones we have. When did the last backup occur? What extensions are in the allow list for my server, et cetera, et cetera. Now, same as what happened when we were working with the GitHub Copilot chat functionality locally is that we see those queries being saved in the query history. And we see as the extension is working that it is now being saved one by one here on that left side, right? So here we can see it working through that uh, question that I have sent it over. And it says here, let me gather more comprehensive information about your Azure PostgreSQL database compute and storage resources. And it's given us the summary of what we were actually looking for. Pretty, pretty neat here too. So feel free to explore on your own time, these other prompts that we've provided and any other prompts that you would like to. Now you may have noticed that we also have the option to use this connect database in agent mode. So let's see what this is all about. For this, we're actually going to create a new local server. So I'm going to go ahead and hit on the create new server icon. And I'm gonna move some things around just to have some more space. Create a local Docker server, get started. It's gonna check our prereqs, awesome. And then I'm gonna hit continue. We, once again, I'm gonna close some more things here. We have the settings that you need listed for you here. And I'm going to go ahead and copy all of these. Postgres, awesome. And then this is just going to be Postgres, hit save password. And we're going to hit advanced here. Depending if your machine is an R machine or not, you will use the appropriate settings here. Now the port is this value right here. And for, because I am on an R machine, I'm gonna select this image name and the correct version as well. Do keep in mind that depending on the machine that you are on, these values will look different. Alrighty, gonna remove that and then go ahead and hit create. This might take a few moments because it has to pull in that image and set it up for you. So I'll be back once this is done. Awesome, all done. So now on our left side, we should see that new connection as well. And it's just right here. Right, so what we want to do is have it create a couple of things. Right. So I'm gonna copy this here, right click, copy. And then we can open up our GitHub chat, GitHub Copilot chat panel. I'm gonna hit a plus here to start a new one. And then I'm gonna hit paste. And what we're asking it is, oh, I forgot. We need to make sure we set this to agent mode versus ask mode, okay. So we're gonna say create a new database in local post GIS. Server called observations and enable post GIS for it. We're gonna go ahead and run it. And I wanna make sure this is expanded here because we should see queries coming in as well. So it's gonna ask us to essentially click through the actions that it is executing. So I'll help you create a new database called observations. We saw that it uh, ran that first one. Now it wants to connect to it. Awesome. Now I'm connected to the local post just server and it's now wanting to fetch database objects. Awesome. And we can see those queries coming in on the left side as well. Let's go ahead and let it do its thing. After this, we're gonna want to load in some data. Okay, so now it's connected and it's going to now modify the database. Okay, go ahead and create the observations database on the connection. Great, again, we can see that query coming in here on the left side. All right, so now it has created that. Now it needs to go ahead and connect to it. Great, because it needs to uh, install that extension that we've asked for, right? Okay, now it's gonna go ahead and do that actually. Uh, execute this modification for that extension, perfect. Now it should be able to use the post uh, just extension. Awesome, now it's gonna query and see if the extension is actually there. All right, so it says here, the extension has been successfully installed. All right, and now it wants to do a query. 
to check what, where did that go? What spatial data types and functions are now available? Awesome. So it looks like it completed everything that we needed and it's giving us a summary of what it has been able to accomplish. Right, so now from here, we can go ahead and tell it to do a task in natural language. So I'm gonna first copy this over here, paste this here. And here we have asked, use the data slash observation slash Pennsylvania dash insects.csv from my workspace to create a new table called Pennsylvania in the local post GIS or GIS <laughs> server and load the data in. Okay, so great. I'm gonna hit continue. I'll help you create a table for the Pennsylvania insects data and load the CSV file into it. And it needs to first examine the CSV file to understand its structure. Great. So now it's invoked the PG SQL agent and it needs to modify the database. Awesome. Looks like right now it is creating the table. And again, we can keep seeing the queries that are coming in here on the left side. Okay, the table's been created. Now it's gonna go ahead and try and load that CSV data into the table. I'm gonna hit continue. It's doing a bulk load here for us. Great. It has loaded in 6,649 rows. Awesome. Now it needs to populate the post uh, guess, uh, geometry column and it's gonna execute a modify database. Awesome, let's go ahead and run this. Awesome, and now it looks like it needs to modify the database once more to create the spatial index. Great, we're gonna hit continue there. You can also see that on the right side of this continue, you can allow it to continue in this session, in this workspace, or always allow, and that's personal preference, really. All right, so now it says here, it's created that, let's verify the data has been loaded correctly and check some sample records, okay. Gonna hit continue. Okay, and now it's going to run a query to ideally give us some samples. It's saying here, let me also check what types of insects we have in the data set. All right, so now summarizing its work, looks like it's created that table and it's got the structure here. Okay, so what we can actually do, oh, here, the sample data. The data set contains recent insect observations from across Pennsylvania, including moths, wasps, and other insects with precise geographic locations. For example, the horrid zale, moth at the coordinates in some coordinates here, the wool sour gall wasp at coordinates here. All right, so if I go and right click on observations, right? And then I expand this public one, tables, Pennsylvania, I can do select top thousand and we have that information there. So it's loaded incorrectly for us. And then of course we can do right click up, uh, actually we have to do this up here, right click visualize schema, or I think I could also tell it to, can you? Oh, let me just say visualize, visualize schema. And I'm pretty sure it can pull up that schema visualization for us as well. Continue, and yeah, there we go. And we have a couple of other things you can go ahead and run. For example, convert the latitude longitude into a new geometry column. What are the top observed species in Philadelphia? Let's actually copy this one here. Let's, let's ask it this question. This is a cool thing. We can ask it to do certain tasks or we can ask it just queries like this in natural text. And we can keep eye on those queries that get executed here on this left side. Hit continue here once more. And once it's done, I'll show you, we can just go and select those queries just like we did last time make any edits, run them on ourselves, copy them, whatever it is that we wanna do, right? Okay, so it's querying the Pennsylvania Insect data to find the top observed species in Philadelphia, and it has found that information for us. Now, I'm no expert in this data set, so this could, of course, be wrong. As always, when we're using AI tools, it's very important to verify, but this is extremely helpful, and it's actually quite neat to be able to just ask it things straight up and it convert these things into queries. All right, that's it for this video. You've got everything you need to get started with the extension. Again, be sure to check out the resources in the description. If you've got any questions, comments, feedback, or you want us to cover any other things related to this extension or anything VS Code, really, just drop them in the comments. All right, I'll see you in the next video.